Buddhologist Edward Kahn's has proposed that similarities existed between Buddhism and Gnosticism, a term deriving from the name, Gnostics, given to a number of Christian sects. To the extent that the Buddha taught the existence of evil inclinations that remain unconquered, or that require special spiritual knowledge to conquer, Buddhism has also qualified as Gnostic. Khans Edward Kahn's claim to have noted phenomenological commonalities between Mahayana Buddhism and Gnosticism, in his paper Buddhism and Gnosis, following an early suggestion by Isaac Jacob Schmidt. Kahn's explicitly compared Mahayana Buddhism with Gnosis, that is, knowledge or insight, and not with the Gnostics, because too little was known about the Gnostics as a social group. Based on Kanz's eight similarities, Holler gives the following list of similarities. Liberation or salvation can be achieved by a liberating insight, namely gnosis or jnana. Ignorance, or a lack of insight, called agnosis or avidya, is the root cause of entrapment in this world. Liberating insight can be achieved by interior revelation, not by external knowledge. Both systems give a hierarchical ordering of spiritual attainment, from blind materialism to complete spiritual attainment. Wisdom, as the feminine principle personified in Sophia and Prajna, plays an important role in both religions. Myth is preferred over historical fact, the Christ and the Buddha are not mere historical figures, but archetypal primordial beings. Both systems have antinomianistic tendencies, that is, a disregard for rules and social conventions in higher spiritual attainments. Both systems are intended for spiritual elites, not for the masses, and have hidden meanings and teachings. Both systems are monistic, aiming at a metaphysical oneness beyond the multiplicity of the phenomenal world. According to Kahn's, these commonalities were not by chance, but inherent to the essence of both religions. How these similarities came into existence was unclear for Kahn's, but according to Virardi, they may be related to the sea trade between the Roman Empire and India, which was intense at the time. Virardi further notes the similarities between the social economic base of both Gnosticism and Buddhism, namely merchants, which both had to compete with the great organized powers of Rome and the Christian Church, and of the Brahmins. Both communities represented an open economy and society lacking the defenses and the vexations of nomos. The law and institutions of the establishment, Kanza's suggestions were noted by Elaine Pagels as a possibility. In the introduction to the Gnostic Gospels, but Pagels and Kanz's suggestion has not gained academic acceptance or generated significant further study. <laughs> Manichaeism According to Giuseppe Tucci, Manichaeism may have influenced Tantric Buddhism, while Mircea Iliadi noted similarities in the symbolism of light and mystic knowledge, predating Manichaeism, and possibly going back to an early common Indo-Iranian source. Virardi notes that Manichaeism is the prime source for comparisons between Buddhism and Gnosticism, Manichaeism representing the same urban and mercantile ambience of which Buddhism was an expression in India. When the mercantile economy declined, with the decline of the Roman Empire, Manichaeism lost its support. The Manichaeists were hostile to the closed society of farming and landownership, just like the Buddhism conflicted with the non-urban world controlled by Brahmin laymen. Mani, an Arsacid Persian by birth, was born 216 AD in Mesopotamia modern Iraq, then within the Persian Sassanid Empire. According to the Cologne Mani Codex, Mani's parents were members of the Jewish Christian Gnostic sect known as the Elchazet. Mani believed that the teachings of Buddha, Zoroaster, and Jesus were incomplete, and that his revelations were for the entire world, calling his teachings the religion of light. Following Mani's travels to the Kushan Empire at the beginning of his proselytizing career, various Buddhist influences seem to have permeated Manichaeism. Buddhist influences were significant in the formation of Mani's religious thought. The transmigration of souls became a Manichaean belief, and the quadripartite structure of the Manichaean community, divided between male and female monks the elect and lay followers the hearers who supported them, appears to be based on that of the Buddhist Sangha. Early 3rd century 4th century Christian writers such as Hippolytus and Epiphanius write about a Scythianus, who visited India around 50 CE from where he brought four books and the doctrine of the two principles in which the early church fathers describe as assigning both good and evil 
to God. According to Cyril of Jerusalem, Scythiana's pupil Terabinthus presented himself as a Buddha. He called himself Buddhas. Terabinthus went to Palestine and Judea, becoming known and condemned, and ultimately settled in Babylon, where he transmitted his teachings to a woman who left his books to a young Mani, thereby creating the foundation of Manichaeism. But Terabinthus, his disciple in this wicked error, inherited his money and books and heresy, and came to Palestine, and becoming known and condemned in Judea he resolved to pass into Persia, but lest he should be recognized there also by his name he changed it and called himself Buddhas. According to Willis Barnstone and Marvin Meyer, evidence of the influence of Buddhist thought on the teachings of Mani can be found throughout texts related to Mani. In the story of the death of Mani, the Buddhist term nirvana is being used. It was a day of pine and a time of sorrow for the messenger of lightenter death when he entered complete nirvana. Topic. Notes. Topic. References. Topic. Sources. Printed sources Web sources <laughs>